Individual meetings with the parents and team aim to be therapeutic in and of themselves. In individual meetings, time may also be spent on setting the stage for family sessions. And then, family meetings offer topics, experiences, and new outcomes that may need to be brought back into meetings with juvenile justice or school personnel or addressed back in individual meetings with a parent or youth. Progress in one session has implications for and use in others. During therapy, adolescents and their families also discuss how to use support systems such as 12-step groups or parent support networks. Getting back to the case, one day the therapist visited Nick at school during lunch. The therapist saw firsthand the problems he was having. Nick was the oldest kid in the class. When asked, Nick said, oh, those stupid kids. He clearly was embarrassed and angry. Being in the school environment with Nick provided an opportunity for the therapist to experience and address something that troubled him. So, improving Nick's school situation became a goal and facilitated a therapeutic alliance. The therapist said that from this session forward, it was easier to focus on other sensitive topics. Nick now felt comfortable talking about his drug use and his relationship with his mother. In individual sessions, Nick was learning new ways to manage his emotions. This would help Nick in all relationships. And this work was also helping prepare him for a new kind of discussion with his mother. In exploring Nick and his mother's history, themes of neglect, abandonment, and Carol's drinking emerged. The therapist helped Nick face strong feelings of disappointment and frustration. Ashamed, Nick said he didn't trust the most important person in his life, his mother. In an individual session, Nick talked about how much his mom's drinking bothered him. The therapist coached him about talking through matters with his mother more directly. Planning for these sessions, the therapist also addressed courage and hope. Although Nick was angry and resentful toward Carol, at the same time, he firmly felt that he wanted and needed his mom in his life. Carol talked about her own struggles with drugs and alcohol. Parents cannot be effective if their own personal functioning is compromised in this way. And since parents are instrumental to changing the teen, therapy focused on Carol's recovery as well. Carol had significant past traumas of sexual abuse and abandonment. She felt tremendous guilt about neglecting Nick. Focusing on this and her stress and burden, the therapist helped Carol with her parenting skills. Carol concluded that she could do better even though she had been abused by her parents and had poor parental role models. The MDFT approach uses some elements of psychoeducation or parenting training. And while a good self-help book or parenting website might be useful, this input is used in the service of the experiential and behavioral aspects of therapy. Whether it's a focus on parenting, a teen's experiments in self-change, or training therapists, MDFT emphasizes learning by doing. Concepts and discussion about change are important, but ideas and intentions must be put into action outside of sessions, in real world, everyday situations that matter. As phase two of treatment continues, Carol's attitude toward her son was positive. He's got a good heart. He's fair and caring, was her basic response, despite Nick's disconnection from her. This was a protective factor for Nick. It formed an important foundation to use in building the mother-son relationship and in creating change. Years of neglect had seriously damaged the mother-son relationship. So in the family domain, one focal area was to help Nick and his mom reconnect, to repair and build a new developmentally appropriate relationship. Change in family interaction was accomplished in family sessions. Mom and son, facilitated by the therapist, talked about past hurts and recommitted to their relationship. In individual sessions, mother and son were coached on how to talk about what's important to each other. Then in family sessions, they discussed what had gone wrong, how their own individual problems were affecting their relationship, and how they wanted their relationship to be different. In joint sessions, the therapist coached Carol 
in how to include delicate issues, such as her feelings of guilt and neglect of her son. Individually, the therapist worked with the mom to prepare her for an apology. This was Carol's idea, and it became a powerful moment in therapy when she expressed her remorse for actions in the past, all the pain she had caused her son. After that, Carol was able to tell Nick why she felt so strongly that he not use drugs. She emphasized how much she loved him and explained how she herself had experienced the destructive force of drugs. The therapist worked with Nick, helping him to learn how to talk with his mother about difficult subjects as well. His reasons for using and hanging out with drug using friends, giving up in school and the impact of his mom's drinking. Nick said that he had an apology to make as well. He discussed his regrets about messing up at school and how using had hurt his mom. In the extra familial domain, the therapist empowered Carol to take action. She gave Carol tips and talked through how to manage Nick's school situation and how to seek out pro-social community activities. With the therapist's guidance, Carol found Nick a lead for a part-time job. He took it from there, getting up early for and ultimately succeeding in the job application process. Nick and Carol's participation was consistent throughout treatment. The interventions were effective, and after a few sessions, Nick started to go to school regularly again. In one instance, Carol got a meeting with a school principal. After Nick served his suspension, she requested and got Nick transferred from a troublesome class to one that was better for him. This was powerful. It was the first time Nick had seen his mother consistently sober and advocating effectively for him. Nick had wondered about Carol's love for him, but through her actions, he saw her investment and her commitment to her own change and to making things better for them as a family. Mom's success in her recovery efforts, along with the dramatic improvements in the mother-son relationship and Nick's newfound school turnaround, all potentiated Nick's examination of his drug taking. Although he said he still enjoyed marijuana, he stated that he no longer needed it. In the middle phase of treatment, Nick had periods of abstinence, but he did continue to use marijuana and alcohol at parties twice in as many months. Throughout the program, he didn't play football as he had hoped, but he began to change his peer network. He spoke with the therapist about having more fun with friends, including some new ones, without drugs and not being so tense at home. He defined his drug use as something he looked back on rather than looked forward to. Carol worked on her own recovery. She attended AA meetings regularly, and with the therapist's help, consulted a psychiatrist for symptoms of depression and anxiety. Her actions were meaningful to Nick. He interpreted these behaviors as his mom's sincerity and commitment to work on their problems. In phase three, MDFT solidifies and helps the family make sense of the changes that they've achieved. The teen and families focus on how to keep the positive changes going and they're mindful of things that may not have been accomplished during treatment. The outcomes may be rough around the edges, but still major relative to where things were at the start of the program. Juvenile justice charges may still be pending. The youth may still be completing his drug court or probation. Success is measured not only by the absence of drug using behavior, but by changes in relationships and other parts of the teen's world. By the end of the four months of treatment, both Nick and Carol were clean, no longer using or drinking. During the final treatment session, the launching of the family, mother and son were communicating and problem solving on their own beautifully. They were negotiating rules about Nick's going out at night, curfew, and what time to have their family dinner together. The therapist facilitated the conversation that focused on recognition and expression of the many positive changes they had both made. Carol told her son how proud she was when he earned his first A in school. She also praised him for staying clean and not using anymore. And Nick told his mom that he sees her pride in him about his change and the new choices he's made. Nick also acknowledged his mom's abstinence and its positive effect on her health and their relationship.
In this final session, mother and son were appreciating each other. Carol and Nick committed themselves to build on what they had accomplished. MDFT didn't solve all of their problems, but it helped them make progress. They're now living drug and alcohol free. They've entered a new stage of development and hope.